Despite losing additional ground to Russian forces in the 60th week of the conflict, Ukrainian soldiers refused to give up Bakhmut over Orthodox Easter. Power shifts in the Russian military suggested that President Vladimir Putin was dissatisfied with his army's performance during a winter offensive, which failed to capture the remaining areas of Luhansk and Donetsk not under Russian control by March 31. Kiev continued to gather military equipment for a counteroffensive. The military of Ukraine claimed that bloody battles unprecedented in recent decades were taking place in the eastern city of Bakhmut, which had been completely destroyed by months of fighting. Wagner units may have advanced in the city's northwest, according to geolocated footage that was published on Monday. Three city blocks in the north, south, and center of the city, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense, have been taken. The Terranoron Force, a Ukrainian battalion near Bakhmut under the command of Colonel Dmitry Zovrotnyak, said that Russian forces were employing tactics that were unique for Ukrainian forces. The Russians attack mainly in small groups of five to six people who, under the cover of artillery, try to penetrate the battle formations of the defense forces of Ukraine and engage in close-range shooting battles, he said. This was unlike the broad frontal attacks the Russians attempted in the early months of the war. Moscow said its paratroopers had succeeded in blockading the embattled city, so Ukrainian forces could not get in or out. Airborne troops are blocking the transfer of Ukrainian army reserves to the city and the possibility of retreat for enemy units, the defense ministry said in a statement. Both sides claimed the battle was causing greater attrition for the other side. During the last two weeks in the Bakhmut area, the enemy lost almost 4,500 Wagnerians and servicemen of the regular armed forces of the Russian Federation killed and wounded, said Brigadier General Alexei Grimov of the Ukrainian General Staff. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar said on Facebook, enemy losses in Bakhmut are many times higher. There are days when the difference reaches 10 times. Ukraine has estimated about 100 Russian fatalities a day in Bakhmut and about as many wounded. But the head of the Wagner Group mercenary force said Russia had the advantage. Bakhmut is extremely beneficial for us, Yevgeny Prigazin wrote in a 3,000-word essay. We grind the Ukrainian army there and restrain their maneuvers. He admitted what Ukraine has argued, that the battle was strategically pointless for Russia. The capture of Bakhmut itself will not ensure a short-term victory over Ukraine, the road to the Dnieper River, or even the capture of Donbass, he said. After his military command attempted to deprive Ukraine of weapons during the winter, Putin appeared to refocus his approach on Wagner. According to the Institute for the Study of War, a Washington-based think tank, Wagner forces appear to be receiving reinforcements, ammunition, and political recognition which is a stark deviation from the Kremlin's previous efforts to expend Wagner forces and Prigazin in Bakhmut since at least January 2023. Wagner-affiliated sources announced on April 17 that Wagner is training up to three motorized rifle brigades of mobilized personnel to reinforce Wagner's flanks in Bakhmut, the institute said. Ukraine's Eastern Forces spokesman Serhi Cherevity confirmed the collaboration between paratroopers and Wagner mercenaries. The main striking force of the enemy remains the mercenaries from the Wagner Armed Forces Group, who are driven to attack under the threat of being shot, Cherevity said. At the same time, due to heavy losses, the leadership of this terrorist company is forced to add regular airborne units of the Russian armed forces to their formations for support, which we are also successfully destroying. Prigazin confirmed this collaboration too. The European Union last week introduced sanctions against Wagner as a vital part of the Russian war effort. It said Wagner spearheaded the attacks on Soldar, an eastern town that fell on January 12th, and in Bakhmut, and is therefore responsible for supporting materially actions which undermine and threaten the territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence of Ukraine. Additionally, the EU imposed sanctions on RIA Fan, which it referred to as a Prigazin-controlled propaganda source. Putin's support of Wagner hinted at his resentment of his defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, and his army commander, Valery Gerasimov, who tried to deprive Wagner of supplies and recruits throughout the winter. Shoigu and Gerasimov's failure to seize the last territories outside of Russian control in the eastern provinces of Luhansk and Donetsk by the end of March, as Putin had requested, was probably the cause of their discontent. We've previously written on ongoing civil lawsuits whose attorneys claim their goal is to demonstrate Wagner is a terrorist outfit. New information has emerged supporting those legal proceedings. A video interview with two formerly imprisoned criminals who were freed after signing up with Wagner was made public on Monday by the Russian human rights organization Gulegu.net. 
Azamath Yaldarov acknowledged that Prigazin had given orders for his team to kill kids as they seized control of Soldar and that he had really killed 18 kids in the provinces of Krasnodar Krai, Saradov, and Kirov. Wagner allegedly gave the order to kill any citizens in Bakhmut who were 15 years old or older, according to Alexei Savage, and his unit murdered 23 people, 10 of them were defenseless teenagers. Savage claimed to have seen the execution of 80 Wagner warriors for disobeying instructions and that he had also shot at his own soldiers for the same reason. These testimonies support the evidence already in place that Wagner killed without provocation and committed crimes against humanity. Putin may find himself in further legal jeopardy as a result of his growing overt reliance on the organization to accomplish state objectives. Putin was accused by the International Criminal Court for the first time on March 17. The war crime of illegal removal of population, children, to Russia was the subject of the indictment. The counteroffensive's equipment assembly and combat training continued in Ukraine. According to its military intelligence, it has used one Black Hawk aircraft in combat and is looking to purchase more. Canada announced that it would start flying an Antonov 124 Ruslan transport plane to Ukraine to deliver confiscated Russian assets. Additionally, it had sent Ukraine all eight of the Leopard 2 tanks it had committed to. Ukraine received a company of 14 Challenger 2 combat tanks from the United Kingdom. Poland was permitted to send its MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine by Germany on April 13. After the fall of communism, Poland purchased 22 MiG-29s from Germany and Berlin had to authorize the change of end customer. Poland has sent four MiG-29s, is getting ready to send another four, and has another six on order. All 13 of Slovakia's MiG-29s had been transferred to Ukraine, but according to Ukrainian Air Force spokesman Yuri Ignat, not all of them were suitable for use in battle. Just four were transported to Ukraine. Nine of them took the road. Ignat predicted that several Slovak MiGs would be dissected for parts. Prigazin claimed that Ukraine has 200,000 soldiers deployed and sufficient weapons to go them on the offensive in various directions. He did, however, issue a dire warning, if the Ukrainian armed forces do not launch an offensive in the near future, they will gradually start to lose their combat potential. The Ukrainian counteroffensive, when it materializes, could succeed, according to Prigazin.